Hey y'all, Edward from Heavy Cardboard here at Gamma 2018. The convention has actually just ended and I was fortunate enough to be joined by a buddy of mine, Kevin Nesbitt of Mercury Games. And as you guys can see, we have the ginormous edition, the 10th anniversary edition of Container. So Kevin, thanks for taking the time because I know everyone's tearing stuff down out there. No trouble. You grab me by the collar and you drag me in here. I don't think I have much of a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy who's 6'6". <laughs> so, so everybody obviously can see the, the supersized version of Container. Yeah, uh, yeah. Here. This in particular is the, uh, like a little engineering sample I brought. So this is the final product, mm -hmm. but it's unpainted. It's, it's just show off the kind of the cool resin, right. solid, heavy. It's a quarter pounder. It's a quarter pounder unloaded. I, I think once you put the uh, the containers on there, it's going to go up, you know, 10, 20 percent from that. But yeah, a quarter pounder. And sure. we were fortunate enough uh, before the actual show started. So on Tuesday night, the three of us, you, me, and Matt, got together, went up to your room, and actually got a chance to unpack it and take some pictures. Yeah. And take a look at it. And I got to say, it's not as obnoxious as I feared that it was going to be. <laughs> we got right? a lot of questions about that. Sure, um, people sure. are afraid we're going to sell something silly. And I mean, so it, I mean, it basically started with the containers, right? So we wanted to, we, we took the original container size, felt they're a little, a little small, a little fiddly. Uh, they fall off the boats a little easily. They, they're hard to load from a distance. Uh, um, and, and, and worked with what, what, what's, what size makes them manageable? What's, what, how easy is it to pick these up from across the table and load them onto the boat? We kind of joked about if the price is right at the warehouse, someone will load them for you. But if it's if it's a if it's a too much of a steal, they'll make you load it themselves. So you're reaching exactly, across the right. table and you're loading them up. So so once we got to a size where the containers were comfortable and mm -hmm. with with a high degree of accuracy, you could pick them up. Um, that set the size uh, for the containers. But of course, then that dictates the size for the boats, and that dictates the size of the harbors, which dictates the size of the player board, so on and so forth. All all up to the box. So it's kind of that one little measurement took us all the way up to. So it actually went backwards from what I assumed. I assumed you know what, let's make these huge ships and then go from there. But it was all about the containers is where it started. Basically, yes. I mean, I mean, in my mind, of course, I imagine gigantic ships and, you know, magnets and levitate. But, you know, being realistic and being the, sure. being the publisher, no, the, the, the logical way for us to start was with the containers because that's what you're interacting with the most and mm -hmm. then the ships the second most. So, so one set the size for the next, but it went from smallest up to, you know, the biggest things. That makes sense. Yeah. And I got to say, graphic design, it looked really good. The colors are clear, crystal clear as far as delineation as opposed to the first edition right. it definitely had issues between the ship color the container color so on and so forth yeah it's nice to have colorblind um, protection there for people and and we have access to some nice filters and I mean it passed all the tests except for the you know the the, the, the folks that have trouble seeing anything but black and white and of course it's gonna be very hard to make a game for those folks sure, I understand that's sure. quite rare but for everybody else it passed all the filters and, and instantly the colors are still easy to recognize for yeah, most people yeah, that they're, they're, they're clearly delineated as opposed to the that first edition to where there were shades of brown. Right? right, that was that was really hard, especially in a darkened room. I mean, it's, 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 it was workable, but it could, it could be better. And I mean, uh, any reprint has got to be, it's, it's about learning and, and doing better. And so we've had 10 years to learn and do better. You're right. Yeah. Um, so us being here at Gamma, and this is on the cusp of being delivered, correct? Right, I mean, we had that um, that delay with, uh, we had that the material change that we didn't know about. So we, I mean, this is the boat we approved. Right. And ultimately the boat we got was something very different. And so they were saying, where do you want these delivered? And I said, well, I don't want these delivered at all. I mean, if they can't be top quality, I don't want any part of lower quality. So send them all back. So I think something like 30,000 of these were put to a to oh. a, a some some poor use of garbage or something like that. Wow. And um, but I mean that's that's what it takes to I mean so here we are months later. Right. And now it's done right. And that's that's more important to me personally and to the company to get it right, even if it takes a little while longer. Ultimately, a few months delay on the front end, no one's gonna remember that. It's right. whether in whereas if these were brittle like say the first edition ships right. were, people yeah. would remember that. But the fact that, I mean, yeah, that's, you know that's, what that's I mean? A, that's a I mean yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. right? Um, you drop that in your toe and you'll know it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Again, quarter pound. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I, this, this, it, yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't advise trying that on me, but you could try it on somebody, maybe. <laughs> Says um. the guy right in here by the collar. Um, so as far as timeline, when are folks looking for both 
Kickstarter uh, fulfillment as well as retail. Well, we're expecting this to be ready to send out in mid mid to late May, no later than early June. I mean, there's you know things could still happen, right? Sure. You know, logistics being what it is. Right. I, um, I play a lot of those games. I understand. Right. Yeah. This game, right. for example. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, um, so um, late May, early June for 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 pre-order Kickstarter uh, folks. They they always go out first. I I, I don't know if I mentioned before. Um, we have this thing. It's a policy I've had since I've. St I mean, I started publishing a long time ago now, um, but I've always felt it's important that you are the, the, the last person to get your own pre-ordered copy. So, I, I mean, obviously, I don't... You care, being Mercury Games, Mercury, right? Well, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a Mercury Games policy. It's been a personal policy my entire publishing career, and it's a Mercury Games policy company-wide. Uh, while I have a demo copy to bring around and, and, and give away or show, uh, I don't get my own copy um, until uh, everybody else's pre-order copy has shipped first. Uh, so it's possible, conceivable, if someone, say, in Honduras has ordered, it's conceivable I'll be taking my, and opening my copy before they receive it. But right. generally speaking, people are, I'm seeing pictures of people enjoying their copy before I ever even get mine. And I think it's That's uh, pretty cool. I, I think, think it's that's a fair a incentive. Policy. Yeah, it, may, it makes us work harder and efficiently, because of course we want our own, we're drooling, we want, we want this too. I mean, that's, that's part of the reason we're printing it. I want a copy too. Um, and uh, I, think that, I think that's a, a, fair, a fair deal to have with your pre-order customers, right? Like they're trusting us with their money, right? Right. Uh, and so you, you you owe them a you owe them a, a debt, and part of that debt is making sure their 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 copy is on the way before I get mine, right? So, so. and when you say pre-order, you mean pre-orders through the Mercury Game site as well as Kickstarter, right? That's correct. Yeah, in this case, we did a we did a pre-order for the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Did a Kickstarter. There's still a late pre-order, um, which is going to be ending soon um, on our website. Um, so yeah, all those folks I would consider pre-order customers, backers. They're all people that have trusted us with their money. So you know, the highest priority to them. Very cool. Yeah. And for those that didn't pre-order or are watching this after the fact or miss that on the Kickstarter, et cetera, et cetera, this is going to be available retail? It'll go to retail, yeah. Um, um, there's minimum order quantities, and especially when working with this kind of material, which is very expensive, you have to have a, a, a pretty healthy minimum to make it make any sense at all. As far as like the print run, you're saying, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, because it's really expensive. Per unit, these are quite expensive to make. Uh, by far the most expensive game I've been involved in. More than double the most expensive game I've ever produced in my, oh, wow. my career. Okay. More all than right. double. But again, I. I can believe it. Yeah, it's just, right. it, you work I mean, with that kind of material, it gets expensive. Um, and the, the logistics of shipping a heavy box, yeah, like six it, pounds? It, yeah. I, I think it's nine, nine, nine and a half, something like that. It's, it's heavy, yeah, it's heavy. You wouldn't, again, don't drop on your toe. It's <laughs> not going to work out well. Uh, so, sorry, what was your question? So, as far as uh, retail and making this right. available to those that may have missed out on the pre-order. So, it should be on retail shelves probably mid to late June, all things being equal. Sure. No, no big surprises, uh, logistically speaking. Um, we have been saying, though... Um, because you know our priority was was getting our pre-order customers satisfied, right. the retail is going to be a bit short supplied at this point. I've had a lot of questions from people uh, at this show, a surprising amount of attention. Um, we knew it would be popular. We didn't think it'd be this popular. Good problem to have. Good problem to have. Um, but what it does mean is that um, if someone really wants to copy this game and they're not in the pre-order, um, we still value any anybody who buys the game. That's great. The best thing they do would be go to their favorite retailer and say, "I want a copy of Container, uh, and would you please?" Reserve one for me. Um, that is the best way to avoid like a short supply situation. Okay. I'd like to All think right. that everyone who wanted a copy can get one, but the reality of publishing is sometimes we have to guess uh, a number ahead of time, and the number we guess ultimately does not meet the demand. And there's this gap between right. you know the printings. So on, um, I'm asking you to look into the future potentially hmm. with the cost that this game was, the size, the shipping weight, the whole nine yards. Is this a one and done as far as the 10th anniversary edition of Container, meaning this might be the only print run because of costs, or is this something that could happen again? Um, it, well, it is, it is very expensive. Um, we've had good support on our pre-orders. Um, like I would like to think if we, if we have the short supply, we think we do, that we would reprint it. I, I've, I've not, in my publishing career, never like telling people, it's in super short supply, you've got to get it now. Sure, it, I, right, I don't like, yeah. I don't Artificially, like, right, right. I don't like yeah. people do that to me as a customer. I, right. play, I buy board games too, um, so I don't like doing it to people. I genuinely think it's in short supply, um, but if it did sell through like we think it will, we would have a lot of incentive to run this same edition again. There will okay. be no, there will be no regular edition with no plans at this point for like a regular non-cool like edition. A, a smaller version. Yeah, or... it doesn't, it doesn't serve any purpose to go backwards. We we pulled some of our customers and we found that no, they they want they want the more deluxe. It, it's it's not like it's a brand new game. It's a known game. People love it. There's a there's I think there's more fans of it than there were copies ever printed, <laughs> which means there's I I think that's a fair statement. Right. Sure. And so so there's no there's no incentive um, for them or us to to take it down below this. So I mean the tenth anniversary. 
first edition, I would expect, would have a reprint at some point. I mean, okay. it's expensive and it's time consuming, so I can't see how big the gap would be. Okay. Um, and I don't want to create an artificial panic no. at all. That's not my, not my goal Understood. here, but just for, you know, for fair play right. for people, if they want a copy, they would be best served to go and get it reserved now, however they choose to do so. Okay, cool. Yeah. And don't want to keep you too long because I know you got to, but you did just make the announcement about the 20th anniversary of Big City, right? Right. I mean, we, we've had some very good fortune. I mean, I worked with uh, some this title before in its previous iteration, um, so it gave me a good connection to access the, the, the rights to that game as well. Uh, we've been fortunate to be offered that. It's a great, great success for, uh, for such a little company. Uh, yeah, Big City is a game that I think it was the very first Euro game I ever bought. Um, I think in 2000. So a sentimental ties. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and even then, then as now, I still think it's a really cool game. And just by, I mean, by sheer coincidence, um, Franz Benno, the designer, uh, I, I had spoken with him before his untimely passing in 2007, and he right. had told me exactly what he would do if he could change the game. Because he, he had some things with the original game he didn't like ultimately. Okay. Um, and so some buildings he would like to have added, some he didn't care for the exchange rule ultimately, how the, how the properties are traded. And while he didn't always provide the exact answer I have enough email I kept all my emails with him um, and I still have them and so here very, we are that's 10 really years, cool it's that's... like 10 years later and I can still almost like he almost ask him what would you what would you do but what remind me what would you do if you had the chance to reprint this game it's kind of like he, it's kind of like he's involved in some way right and right. It makes me feel good uh, because it's kind of like there's some input there that I can work with and we have we spent a lot of time developing it it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be even better and I think that his widow would would be excited to hear that and be and appreciate hearing that right I would, I would like to think so I mean I mean um, I think they were excited that we were interested um, and um, and I think it's I think it's uh, there's there's a legacy there he was a very very smart man a very good designer um, with I think Big City was one of his proudest titles and so the so I think that yeah I think there's a sense of pride and and, and happiness there that's uh, that says like th these games uh, are, are timeless right so here we are you know 20 years later and it's still a pretty cool game and right it still so, holds up right yeah yeah cool so yeah. all right so container fulfillment May, retail, June-ish, yeah, maybe something like that. Way, yeah. As far as Big City, how's that working? Uh, Big City, well, so that was actually ready for Kickstarter. And it, it again, it's so expensive. It's, it's a jumbo edition. It's going to have about 33% large. I mean, this is not, not this large. Okay. Um, but All I right. mean, the largest, for those for those people that watch that know um, Big City, there's like, there's grids and there's like a right. one by one yep. property. There's sure. a one by three. The one by three property is coming in around, you know, let's call it five inches, five and a half inches. Okay. So it's, it's, it's still a great. It's still a, a, a eye catcher on right. the table. Right. right. But because okay. there's no containers that need to be upsized, that which dictates the rest of the project, we don't have the same upsizing issues. So it's going to okay. be, it's going to be great and healthy, healthy upsizing, but not, not so much healthy. Makes 30, sense. 3%, whereas this is about 50%. Okay. So still big and cool. And time frame? Uh, so the we don't run, as a policy, we don't run Kickstarters. It's, the Kickstarter's been ready to go for a couple months. We, we won't run a Kickstarter when there's a product pending. So if someone's given us their money and waiting for a product, we won't ask them to pay us more money and wait for a second product. That's just not a, a we just that don't seems, do it, right? That seems like the right way to it's do not, it. It's not, I wouldn't be interested as a customer in doing that, so I'm not gonna ask our customers to do the same Fair thing. Fair enough. So that, that Kickstarter should run sometime probably late June it'll start. It'll okay. be about a 30 day. Well, it'll be abbreviated because we want to get the project moving. But in the background, we've already started working. We believe there there is a market for these cool games with cool pieces, especially big city. And so some of those buildings are in design stage right now. Like they're 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 being presented to the factory, ready to go. So So you can hit the ground running when the Kickstarter goes. Right. You do have a pretty Definitive timeline on when to expect things. I'd like and to. I'd like to think we'd even have something final to show by the time the Kickstarter is going. Whether oh. it, whether it's a building or two, whether it's some like some, more than just flat artwork. I'd like to have sure. something we could actually show. Okay. Uh, which is which is unusual for a Kickstarter, but in this case, it's it's, it's important to have the timeline preserved because the end ready date we're hoping for October November of this year. Okay. So that's that's that's, that's abbreviated. So we got to have our ducks in a row. And I, but I, I'd like to think we can do it, especially now that we know how to work with this new resin and we're happy with the results here we can just use what we learned and apply that to big city as well and now you don't you basically not knocked out all the kinks so I to speak i mean the, in publishing there's no guarantees fair as enough, you probably fair know but i say all but in theory there's always gremlins right there's always you got unforeseen it. things you got it and so yeah so we're excited especially that there's new content in the new edition um which is going to be kind of fun to work with um again with a lot of input from the original designer which is just brilliant that's amazing uh, so lucky we're so fortunate um, but uh, yeah, I, I would like I would like to hope before the end of the year we'll see this thing uh, you know published and available, which would be just just spectacular. Awesome, man. Yeah. So yeah, container.
entertainer and big city. Be sure to check him out for Mercury Games. Kevin, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Safe travels home. And Absolutely. You too. Hopefully, uh, we'll run into each other again. I would certainly hope so. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks, Thanks very a much. Lot. Thanks, y'all.